Welcome to Real TV. All praises to the Most High. I'm a man now, and I put away the childish things I used to do. I got a plan now, and I want to live my dreams when I'm with Today's you. Today's show is called... Well, we'll think of the title in just a moment. But, um, get some produce, get some family, build our family up. That's what I want to do. Stay tuned. It's not about a Grammy Cup. This is chill music. Yeah. This is real music. Chill music, yeah. This is real music. You are beautiful. You have to understand this, okay? And you are a handsome person. You have to understand this, okay? Beauty from the inside out, okay? Not from the outside in. All right. And I know that everything is going to be okay. I'm here to tell you don't worry. Don't worry about a thing. Everything is going to be all right. All right. Worry about a thing or you And I know that you might think that things won't be okay but it will Fairy tales do come true Beauty's from the inside out, not from the outside in. The inside out and not from the outside in. Today's show is going to be called 501C3 Halloween. And it's a late night. It's 1223 Eastern Standard Time. A.M., and a lot of individuals across the world dressed up for one night, spent money on costumes that they're going to throw away. Some people probably skip rent to get a costume. Skipped a couple of bills to buy some jewels and makeup. And tails and devil ears. Before we get into the main part of the show, I figure we'll switch it up just a notch with not on the mainstream news. We can't cover everything, but we could talk about a few things that are going on in the world. And Again, if this is your first time tuning in to Real TV, as always, I want to applaud you. I want to thank you and to let you know that you are not on this channel by chance. You have been led here by the Most High, the Heavenly Father, to receive insight and knowledge that you have been looking for for some time. Um, so I thank you again for tuning in to Real TV. Round of applause for that. So some of these things are actually on the mainstream news, but we call these topics not on the mainstream news because not all the time it is mainstream, if you catch my drift. But 
not on the mainstream news. Birthright citizenship not covered by U.S. Constitution will be ended one way or the other. End quote. That's coming from Donald Trump. President Donald Trump said that the U.S. Constitution does not guarantee the right to citizenship to everyone born in the country and doubled down on his promise to end the practice. Trump wrote in a Twitter post, so-called birthright citizenship, which costs our country billions of dollars, is very unfair to our citizens, will be ended one way or the other. It is not covered by the 14th Amendment because of the world words subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Many legal, ah, blah, blah. Many legal scholars agree. Blah, 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 blah. It goes on to say a little bit more. So what does this mean? Why now? Okay. As we know, slavery started in 1619 with about 26 slaves that arrived to Arlington, Virginia. This was in the year 1619. 2019 will be exactly 400 years to date that we as Jews, Hebrews, royal lineage, have been in bondage, in affliction, and enslaved for 400 years, just as the scripture denotes from chapter 28 of Deuteronomy and also from Leviticus. All right. So they know that the time is not. The end is here. We've seen it on the Times magazine with Trump and Hillary holding the end is near sign. We know that in this time, there's many signs that we see as it is already. From the technology to the market of beasts is already here. The cashless society is overlapping into a chip society. We notice that uh, what Yahweh put together, let no man break. Not just for marriage, but we understand that they're breaking the seeds of fruits and vegetables. They're doing DNA splicing. With fruits and vegetables, they'll take a, a, a plum and an apricot, crossbreed the seeds and make a pluot. To doing stem cell research to those who need blood. There's a lot of things that are being done that shouldn't be done. And on Real TV, we talk about a cluster of different things because we can just go on on that subject for a length of time. But what I do want to talk about in this article, this whole birthright citizenship thing, not covered. The word citizenship has to do with the corporation. You have the United States of the America and you have North America. OK, North America is where we live in. OK, you could look under Black's Law Dictionary or any of the lawyer dictionaries, if you will. If that's even a term, lawyer's dictionary. Well, you know what I mean. When you look up the word citizen, or the word citizenship as a term and in essence is tied to a corporation. North America is where we live. The United States of America is a private corporation. When we are born, we're given a birth certificate, which has our citizenship on a manual uh, piece of paper that we can hold. On your social security card, your name is in all caps on your driver's license your name is in all caps on your birth certificate your name is in all caps you would think that the all caps is being used just for the sake of neatness easier to understand or better business structure at one point i went to school for medical billing and coding online 
And I learned about the all caps was used for a particular reason. And one of the main reasons all caps is used is not for professionalism. Anytime all caps is used and it's dealing with your name, it's dealing with you as a corporation whenever you see your name in all caps. Follow me on this. Whenever you see your name in all caps, you are considered a corporation. You're considered a business. Person doesn't mean person the way you think it means in business. Entity doesn't mean entity the way you think it means. They consider your name in all caps a false identity. When you write your name, part in the background, I live in an urban neighborhood, if you heard the motorcycle. And no, it's not American Horror Story in the background. <laughs> okay, um, when you write your name, capital letter, lowercase, the rest, and then your last name, capital letter, for the first letter, and then the lowercase for the rest of the letters, you're using what you call the straw man. The straw man is your real identity. Whenever you get bills, your electric bill, your car note, your insurance, your name is in all caps. They're sending the bill to the corporation. Under the United States Constitution, you don't pay off debt, you charge off debt. And to charge off debt, you can use your social security number because you are a bond. You are on the New York Stock Exchange. You're on the stock market. Your social, your birth number is on the New York Stock Exchange and you are worth, your worth is priceless, okay? So when they say citizenship, citizenship is something that is not a birthright. Citizenship is a reward. Citizenship, in essence, is grants you the ability to travel um, internationally and nationally. It allows you to get into certain businesses. It allows you to conduct business, if you will. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting deep on this thing. It's like, since we're talking about business, we have to remember that when conducting business, well, well, let me ask you, just think of this for a second, and I'll, and I'll pause, and I'll give you a moment to just think of the answer. What do you think, when dealing with business, is your strongest possession? I'm not talking about characteristics or any of your eccentricities, but what is the most powerful thing that a person has? What, what is the most powerful thing? I'll, I'll wait a minute to let you think about that. It's something that you use in business all the time when conducting business. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with paperwork, if that helps at all. All right, so the answer is your signature. Your signature is the most powerful thing when conducting business. If you write your name on a sheet of paper... On a contract. And you agree to the terms. Your signature bonds you to that contract. You understand? Ah. So why did I say all that? It's because. The end game. You have to tie all back to scripture. I can't just give you worldly words because worldly words will only fight against worldly words. I give you scripture, it cuts out everything worldly. So we to get back to the spiritual, all this means with this birthright citizenship not covered by the U.S. Constitution, according to Trump, which he wants to make a bill in place to cancel out the 14th Amendment and all this other stuff, it relates back to scripture of the true Jews, the true Hebrews, going back to our homeland. And when they write all this in place, Trump has enough money to send every black person back to Africa. 
maybe, just maybe, with this law, <laughs> every person that is not a birthright citizen, right, would be deported to wherever they're from, and only the quote-unquote Native Americans, Native Americans will be here, and then maybe America would be great again, right? All right, not on the mainstream news. Let's go to the next one so we can get on the show about 501c3. Explain. So, um, uh, before we get to the next slide here, just as a refresh for you. So you can know what a straw man is. The definition, the definition of a straw man is a person whom title to property or business interest is transferred for the sole purpose of concealing the true owner and or the business machinations of the parties. So in essence, what this definition is, the straw man, again, is... The true owner, okay? Citizen, citizen means a legally recognized subject or national of a state or commonwealth. All right, next slide. Now on the mainstream news, Floyd Mayweather has been given an ultimatum by UFC boss Dana White. Um, so, as you can see... Um, <laughs> even if you have a legacy as a quote unquote black man, uh, nine times out of 10, it'll be demolished. You have Michael Jordan, one of the greatest players of all time of the NBA who has created and grossed billions for the NBA over his entire career, whether it's merch Ticket sales, shoe line, billions. And he's only, he's barely a billionaire. He's barely a billionaire, right? But you have people like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, who are in the multi-billions. You have one of the greatest basketball players, Michael Jordan. Six championship rings, back-to-back. And, um... Not only does he retire, but he comes back to the game. And instead of having a legacy, just, <laughs> just winning and leaving it at that, you would think, you know, he really loves the game and he came back. But why couldn't they put him on as co-CEO of the NBA? And, but yet they just give him a little piece of a team the Wizards. You have Floyd Mayweather, 50 and 0. He has a good legacy in the worldly way of boxing, right? But to tarnish that, to come back and do the UFC. Um, again, if we could read between the lines, you can understand that it's a ritual and it's a humiliation ritual. Floyd Mayweather has to get permission to take a certain amount of money out the bank. He gets permission to flaunt the money on the screen, but he is still controlled by the Zionists. Not getting to too deep, not on the mainstream news. Tens of thousands signed petition to change Halloween from October 31st to the last Saturday of the month. I mean, it's just clear as day. I don't need to read the whole article. The last Saturday of the month, Saturday, Saturn's day, uh, Saturn, uh, the top of the planet looks like a cube. You unfold the cube, it looks like a cross. We know that the Jewish worship a black cube. They worship Saturn, the planet Saturn. The planet Saturn relates to the Greek god Kronos, the god of chaos, the grim reaper. Father Time, you see, uh, but the scripture is clear. Man changeth 
the law and times. Even though Halloween is not a time that we should celebrate. You have all type of churches that are celebrating this day. And we're going to get into it after the mainstream news. But um, with that in mind, with this date change, keep in mind that on nem November 4th, uh, coming up shortly, will be daylights. Not daylight saving time. What is it? Fall back. It'll be fall back. So be sure to change your clocks back. But uh, man changes the law and times. There you go right there. That scripture. We got to change the time. And go with this worldly time because it's all messed up. It's all messed up. But hey, it is what it is. Um... As we know, fall is harvest season, and we're going to see a lot of things this season and the seasons due to come, but definitely this harvest, uh, a lot of celebrities are going to be having their uh, situations going on. Not on the mainstream news, suspects arrested in death of DJ Khaled's future brother-in-law. As you can see, DJ Khaled had to have a sacrifice. You can't be on the four show and not have a sacrifice. What's that girl name that was on uh, American Idol? I can't think of a name. She uh, she lost her mama. She lost her brother. I want to say her sister and her boyfriend all got shot and killed. I can't think of the girl's name, but you if a contestant on American Idol has to give a sacrifice, what more should the judges give? Just think about that for a minute. It's just like, uh, I don't know, I can't even name one song of the guy. What's his name? 6ix9ine. He has like the rainbow hair. And one of his uh, security guys got, got shot in the stomach or something. Another, another ritual. Another, I mean, come on. All right, not on the mainstream news here. Usher is being sued by Laura Helm for knowingly transmitting the herpes virus to her. Usher said the details in his herpes exposure case are so sensitive and potentially embarrassing that he needs a gag rule in place to protect his good name. That's according to a new motion from the caught up, quote unquote, singer, which asked the judge presiding over his herpes exposure case to seal evidence in the case going forward. I don't even need to read any more. Again, this is harvest season. This is harvest season for the celebrity world here. Not on the mainstream news, black magic, transsexual prostitution ring smashed by police in Spain. Spanish police said on Wednesday they had rescued 15 young Brazilian transsexuals from a sex trafficking ring that forced them into prostitution by beating them and threatening them with black magic. Well, if you're having... Uh, that type of sex, you're already doing black magic. Leonardo da Vinci put the... Oh, my goodness. Brain fog right now. That, that It's a photo of a man in front of a man. The name of that... The name of that... Uh, name of that illustration Invictus Invictus man or I don't know the name of that one but um that photo by Leonardo da Vinci it's a it's a very famous illustration on uh like this ancient type of paper with the man in front of a man and his arms is stretched out they have that same type of symbology on that show the west world right that photo gives a symbolic meaning of the man 
having sex into another man's anus. That, that uh, man, that illustration, it's called the, uh, the Vitruvian Man. It's called the Vitruvian Man. That popular photo, that popular illustration is praised by the elite because it's a secret uh, signal to sodomy. It's anal penetration. It's called squaring the circle. When you look at the Masonic logo, you see a square, you see a compass, right? Well, what, what does squares make? Squares make squares, and the compass makes, I mean, come on, you, you, you know, right? The square and the circle, squaring the circle. So in businesses, you'll see a lot of hidden symbology that relates to that. Um, I'm trying to think of something off the, ah, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll say that for another time, but <laughs> black magic, transsexual prostitution is already black magic without using black magic. If that makes any sense. All right, we're going to get to the show here. I'll read one more. There's just so much going on. But um, as of late, I'm sure you've heard about how the grand jury indicts a lead synagogue shooter, Robert Bowers, on 44 counts. This article is about the guy who killed 11 people at Pittsburgh. Pardon me. Quote, unquote, Tree of Life Synagogue. On Saturday, on 44 counts, including obstruction, a free exercise of religious beliefs resulting in death, and a number of different other charges. Um, when we look at the numerology here, we know that the 11 number relates to the esoteric meaning that they love. That 11, right? 9-11. Um, and the 44 counts um it's just listen all this about the synagogue is satanic i'm not saying that the event didn't happen but just the idea of quote unquote a Jewish synagogue being invaded or these people that were killed doesn't mean that they are the chosen few. Okay? And um, I'm not going to get too deep on it. I have other shows about um, Jews and Gentiles. Um... Let's get to the real show. We'll be right back right after the short break. Just know that the real Jews have yet to be revealed. Oh, yes, the world knows. The world knows who the real Jews are. It's just that the Jews don't know who they really are. Not yet, but we all will soon. Coming up, we have all-time classic. Let me see. Is it here? Ah, one second. Y'all yeah, got one for you. One second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With that being said, we know that scripture says the Lord knows the blasphemy, 
the blasphemy of those. Oh my goodness, it is late. It is late, pardon me. Let me pull up this scripture here. It's Revelation, so I can get this right. And then we'll jump into this show here. Okay, Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Here we go. Let's get this right. Let's get the scripture right. Okay, Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. In regards to Robert Bowers, the guy who went to the tree of life and killed 11 Jewish people at a synagogue. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works... In tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. But are the synagogue of Satan. know thy works in tribulation and poverty and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan Oh, fake Jew with your afro, you need to cut it. You got dreads, you need to cut it. You got a fro, you need to cut it. Your job application says that you need to be groomed. So go and get some scissors and go and get some clippers. Go and cut your hair, <coughs> especially on the side. <coughs> and um, go and get the broom and sweep it up. Yeah, keep it up. Keep dying your skin. <laughs> yeah, keep it up. Dark skin, yo, brown skin. Now you light skin. We like that. So keep it up. Yo, fake Jew. Yo, fake Jew. You a fake Jew. All y'all dark people fake Jews. You fake Jews. You a fake Jew. Fake Jew. You a fake Jew. With your wool hair. And your brass feet, I'm so glad y'all was in chains. I'm so glad we put brass on your feet, and now y'all still love chains. Ha ha! <laughs> I wanna laugh, but I'ma hold it back, tongue in cheek. We own everything, everything. Y'all don't need no reparations. Y'all don't need anything. Yo, fake Jew, you fake Jew. Yo, fake Jew with your afro, you fake Jew. And your dark skin, yo, fake Jew. Good at sports, dancing, self, yo, fake Jew. Yo, rhythm having, self, yo, fake Jew. We're from Africa. We know Cleopatra. Elizabeth Taylor, yes, we know Cleopatra. We make Cleopatra. We make gods of Egypt. In fact, we are Egypt. Yeah, yeah, y'all was there. Building them pyramids, if that's true. Hold up, hold up. See, there I go. Hold up, no. See, there you go. If black people built the pyramids, then that means that we the Hebrews. I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew. I'm not a fake Jew. I rep mine, and my hair not cut. My hair not cut, and my beard not cut. I got my, I got my blue, I keep my blue at the bottom, at the bottom, in 15, 3, 8, read that, search that, find that, in 15, 3, 8, yo fake Jew, with your wool hair, and your brass skin, yo fake Jew, you a fake Jew. 
Oh, dread having self, you know, yo, fake Jew. Oh, nappy headed. Oh, nappy behind. Oh, oh, nappy head looking. Fake Jew. Fake Jew. I'm not a fake Jew. I'm a Hebrew. I'm not a fake Jew. Yo, fake Jew. And with that being said, we are back. Um, by the way, did y'all know that they're coming out with a, another Cleopatra movie? And Angelina Jolie is supposed to be playing Queen Nefertiti? I mean, come on, man. I mean, how many... Man, how many times are they going to keep whitewashing the movies, man? I mean, not not the movies itself, but the situation, the, the, the lineage, the legacy... I mean, come on. Do do you really think that Caucasians are from Africa? I mean, do you really think that they built the pyramids, man? Like, do you really think? I mean, come on. I mean, just think about it in spirit, in common sense. This is no offense to my Caucasians. This is no, no offense to you all. No offense to any white people. Okay. But I got to call it how it is. This is real TV. And I got to keep it 100. Okay. But let's be real. Let's be frank. Do we really think that all the noses was broken off the statues for a reason? And what reason would that be? Who had, why would they break off the noses? What was the giveaway? Like the, the full lips, the braiding of the hair. Is it really possible for someone who is less melanated to live in an area of the world where the temperatures are 120 in the summertime? I'm not just talking about for a couple of day vacation type of deal. I'm not I'm talking about I'm talking about B.C. I'm talking about B.C. and A.D. You know what I mean? Centuries. Thousands of years. Is it really possible to be less melanated and live under the sun's rays for that long or any period of short time, rather, and not develop skin cancer? Why is it that as of late, There's been so much, so much, so much um, blackface costumes. It's just ridiculous. Yet they make fun of the black complexion, yet tans are okay. Yet they make fun of the size of the lips. But yet there's Botox. I'm not saying that minorities or black women or men, because there are transsexual men out there, that are, I'm not saying that, that they're not getting butt implants and breast implants and things like that. I'm just talking about as a whole. Why is it that Madonna's mole was worshipped? Why is it like a mole, a cool thing to have? Like, why is it like a fashion statement to have like a mole by your lip or on your cheek? You want to know why? You want to know why? It's because according to Hollywood and according to the way they want the world to see this mole, if you will, they praise it. They, it's, it's nothing but a praise of melanin. A mole is nothing more than melanin that has reached the surface. So they praise melanin when they seen the mole on Madonna's face. Marilyn Monroe's face. You see? The show is called 501c3 and Halloween. I'm going to get into it. 
We will. But we have to talk about a few things. This race thing is a very sensitive subject, as it always has been. But what the world needs to understand is that the black race, by blood, is of royal lineage. And that doesn't mean that heaven is going to be all black. That's crazy. It's not. There's Gentiles and then there's Jews. Jews are the direct bloodline of Yeshua. We are the direct bloodline of Yahweh. However, we are all children under Yahweh. You see? Don't be confused. Gentile is nothing, a Gentile is nothing more than someone who is not a Jew, who is not a born Jew, who is not a Jew by blood. That's all a Gentile is. Heaven is going to be a mixed cluster of different races. All races are going to be there. But what the world needs to know and what the world is becoming to know is that black people are of royalty. And before the 29 gets here, there's going to be more affliction towards the black race. There's going to be more killings. Because they know that the time is nigh. I'm sure on Halloween, you may know someone who went to church to have a Halloween party or to have a Halloween uh, prayer at church. Or you may have driven by or walked by a certain part of the neighborhood and you saw bounties outside. You know, because in my neighborhood, there's this one particular church. They had, they had dang on... They had a uh, a pizza food truck they hired and put on site. I mean, they got inflatable little moon walkers out there for the kids to play on and things like that. And then you have all these churches that are having Halloween parties. They're dressing up. They're 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 uh, <laughs> they're betwixt. The scripture said, uh, see, we all got to relate it back to scripture. Common sense says, this is a little weird. Why is this church celebrating Halloween when it's supposed to be a holy church? See, they try to, they try to make it, they try to make good evil and, and evil good. They're mixing and matching. They control the dark. They control the light and everything in between. They give you the truth. They give you the lies and they give you everything in between. So they mix it up. They mix the truth, they mix the lies, and then they make you think it's good to do. What I mean by that? So instead of dressing as goblins and ghosts, the church are having requirements on Halloween now. All right, you can't dress up as the devil. You can't dress up as a ghost. You can't dress up as, um, I don't know, a vampire. But. We're going to have it a clean way, and we're going to celebrate it because there's nothing wrong with kids having fun. So you could dress as angels. You could dress your uh, child as a pumpkin. You could dress your child as a, as a, uh, as a sweet pea. Or if you got triplets, yes, you can bring threes, three in a pot. Um, you can be fairies. All right. Uh, you could dress your child as a fireman. Yeah, you could dress your child as a nurse. In fact, you could dress your child as a pastor. And uh, we're just going to have a little lunch. And uh, we'll just give them some candy because there's nothing wrong with them having a little candy. We don't want the, the candy to be tainted. By the way, don't y'all know, there was an article too. I didn't read that one, but um, 
real quick when I saw my mind, they found a nail and they found a hangnail in a piece of candy or something. It's crazy. But not only that, they don't want the candy to be tainted. So you got all these churches mixing lies with truth and evil with good and good and evil. It's good to have a slice of pizza. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you having uh, burgers and fries at church on Halloween and y'all got a little dance off and doing a limbo and hitting pinatas for candy, I mean, something's going on, man. You're dealing with real witches and warlocks who are part of what you call a 501c3. You may ask yourself, what is a 501c3? Okay. 501c3 is a nonprofit organization that has exemption requirements. All right. Check it. A 501c3 is a tax exempt section under 501c3 of the I of the Internal Revenue Code. It is an organization that must be organized and operated exclusively for exempt purposes. Okay. Um in essence, it is an organization that gets everything tax exempt. We talking charities, we talking scientific research, we talking churches, and you wonder why the churches no, you wonder why you can't find a church. You wonder why you can't find a church. It's because they they are affiliates. They're affiliates. They're affiliates with the elite. They're affiliates with secret organizations, fraternal orders, Masonic orders, Order of the Eastern Star, Frat Club, your sorority club. Don't you know you cannot be a Mason if you don't attend church? You didn't know that? You didn't know you, can, you can't be a part of the order. You cannot be in the Order of the Eastern Stars if you don't attend the church. You can't. You didn't know that, did you? You didn't know that if you see a flag inside of the church that they are part of a 501c3. You didn't know that, did you? You didn't know that if that flag has yellow fringes at the bottom of it, that it has nothing to do with the original flag that is without the fringes. The yellow flag, the flag with the yellow fringes at the bottom correlates to the jurisdiction that you're in. We don't want to get too deep. But you have to understand that any church that you are currently going to right now, if you're going to a church right now and your conscience, your soul has just been telling you, man, it's just something about this church. I, I, I mean, they preach the word, but I, I don't know what it is. I mean, the, the members are, are cool. You know what I mean? S sister such and such is cool. Brother such and such is cool. You know, I'm learning. You know, I was going through something and I heard this this sermon and it helped me. I'm not saying that. Okay. Here's what I'm saying. If you see an ATM in, your, in the back of your church, something is wrong. If your pastor or reverend or bishop or pope or whatever you want to call it does a sermon and at the end of the sermon, they say, well, I just want to let y'all know that um, I wrote a book. You know, in fact, I wrote three books. And at the end of church today, you know, they are for sale. Um, at the church, Sister Maybelline, we got, uh, uh, we got dinner plates in the fellowship hall. And, you know, we just ask that you donate a monetary fund of $20. We just ask this evening... That if you sow a $20 seed to just believe in the Lord and that your blessings will come true. See, see, now in the book of Malachi, it talks about how, how, how can a man rob God through tithes and offering. So they, tithes and offering has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with money. And that's an entire different show. It had to do with crops. It had to do with your first fruit, a tenth of your first fruit that you got from your farm. It had to do with the first of your of your lamb, of your of your kid, that goat. Not your kid, but a kid is the name of a goat. Okay? It had to do with your, your lamb or your goat. The first male 
to, to uh, uh, lamb to be sacrificed to the Most High as a sweet smell unto the Lord, as a burnt offering. It didn't have to do anything with money. But the money that you do get, a tenth of that is supposed to go to the poor. See, the churches always have that excuse. You know, we need you to donate. We need the money. We got, so we got to keep the lights on. We got to keep the AC running. Well, how, how much is the light bill? Right? Why can't that money be divvied up? Okay, everybody put in money, then divvy up the money to everybody in need. This person can't pay a bill. This person's car broke down. This person needs a new car. This person needs groceries. Where is the money going? But the preachers like to be flip-flop. See, they know the word and then they flip it. They, like the, they know the word and then they use it against you. They say, well, you know, since we preach the spiritual things, why can't we reap the carnal things? Right? If you had issues or if you had a feeling or if you felt uneasy about the church you were going to and if y'all celebrated Halloween, if y'all even whatsoever dressed up, if y'all even whatsoever have an ATM in your church, if y'all whatsoever have a flag in your church, you don't go to that church. You stop going. I'm not telling you that. The Most High is telling you that. I'm being used as a vessel right now to let you know to stop going. It's not a church. You are the church. If your church burned down tonight, where do you go to? If your 501c3 church burned on Halloween night, where would y'all would have had service? Where would your Halloween dance party would have been? I'm waiting. I'm waiting on the answer. Would you have church in your living room? See, we have in church right now when two or three are gathered in his name, he dwells there in the midst. Two or three. So with just at least, if you got, if it's just me and you, if it's just you and one other person and y'all talking about scripture, that's church. Yeshua spoke on the hills. He, he, he preached on the boat. I mean, they, I mean, it's everywhere. We know that our body is our temple. Our body is our temple and that is where the Lord dwells. When we do what's right. See, we could be blessing to other people. And the Lord can dwell in us through the Holy Spirit to bless other people. You've probably been behind someone in the grocery line. And the person that was in front of you gave money to the person that was in front of them because they didn't have enough money for groceries. Or you was probably one of the people that gave money to the people that didn't have enough money for groceries. You, in fact, you were the person who got the money, who didn't have enough money for your groceries. And we get to the time in life where we play all three roles. If we're lucky enough to live that long, you've been in a position where you didn't have enough money and somebody gave you money for groceries. You've been in a position where you were that person that gave somebody some money for groceries. Oh, don't worry about it. I got that. Oh, how much do you need? Oh, yes. Oh, Thanksgiving. It happens all the time around Thanksgiving time. People just need, uh, ask the person, excuse me, uh, sir, ma'am, um, I'm sorry to bother you. Do you. I'm sorry. Do you have 39 cents? I mean, I have everything here. I just need 39 cents. Do you have a quarter? You've been there. Man, the Most High dwells in us. The Most High dwells in us. When you go to Acts chapter 7, go to Acts chapter 7, verse 48 through 49. It reads, How be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith, the prophet. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye be build me, saith the Lord? Or what place? What is the place of my rest? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? You have to hear this. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of our heavenly father. And for those who have an ear, let them hear. For those who have an ear, let them hear. We're not looking for numbers. 
If one person get this, that's a lot of people. How be it? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hand. The Most High does not dwell in churches made with hand, man's hand. It looks nice. Yes, the cathedral looks nice. Yes, your church may ha have a few chandeliers and the carpet is clean. Yes, they, they may throw all white linen on that communion table, but God is not in the church. Do you understand that? I don't know if you hear me right now. This, you may be f feeling offended by this. It just, what did the scripture just say? He dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Do you want, do, what, what do we not understand about that? What don't we understand? Now, you're supposed to go to church to show the outward work. You're supposed to go to, to clap your hands, to stomp your feet. To praise physically with your body. To show. And it is good to fellowship with one another. But the scripture says that he doesn't dwell in temples made with man's hands. There's so many scriptures about our body and how our body is the temple. How the eye is the lamp of the body. And how if our eyes are healthy, our whole body will be full of light. We know that um, I mean, come on, man. The show is called 501c3 and Halloween. I hope this helped you out to me, your family. And no matter how old we get, <clears throat> we still have to be children for the most high. We still are children. No matter how old we get, we still are children. We just grown paying bills, grown and paying bills. But the scripture says, unless we become like children, we may not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Meaning that if we're not willing to be obedient like children, to love like we've never been hurt like children, to care for one another, to do as what we're told. Everybody and everything does what is told, but man. You ever thought about that? The Most High tells the wind to blow and it blows. He tells the grass to grow green and it, it's green. The birds go eat the worms, they eat the worms. Squirrels go get the nuts to eat the nuts. You know, you know, you understand? I mean, he tells the flowers to grow and they bloom. He tells the sun to rise from the east and settle in the west. And it does that. And it scurries back over to the other side and do it again every day. He tells the rain when the rain. He tells the snow when the snow. He makes the bear hibernate and wake up. Tell it to wake up and it wakes up. He turns a caterpillar into a butterfly and a butterfly, monarch butterfly, th flies thousands of miles out. Completely change. Everything in nature does what it's supposed to do but man because of sin. But if we get back to what we're supposed to be doing, for the Most High, we'll understand how truly remarkable and fantastic life can be. Just as a caterpillar may not understand that in its short time as a caterpillar, it's only a short time. They scurry across the grass and dirt, maybe a, a centimeter every five minutes or something. Yet, when they're, when they're in that cocoon, they have a long time to transform. Sometimes, you need to get yourself away from the crowd to transform. You need to meditate on the Most High's Word to transform. You need to pray to transform. You need to be in the Spirit to transform. You need to start eating right to transform. 
You need to start developing your mind towards positive thoughts to transform. You need to get ne negativity out of your life to transform. Sometimes you need to really stay home and save that money and stop eating out to transform if you want to come up on paying your bills, saving money, right? In order to see results that you want to see, sometimes you got to do some things that you don't want to do. I'm sure that caterpillar didn't want to stay in that cocoon. For so long. He probably didn't even know how, why he was going in it. But he probably knew that he wanted some alone time. And when he got out, he completely transformed into a butterfly. And from just traveling mere centimeters a day. He's flying thousands of miles. I mean, flying across state lines. He went from couldn't make it to the other end of the sidewalk to flying from Florida to California. Just think about that for a minute. Now, if a caterpillar can do that, how great will we do? See, just, let, let's just get, let's get, keep it real, real quick. We're on real TV. Let's keep it 100. Why is it that every, everybody can get sick here and there? Why are we getting sick? We're not designed to be sick. Have you ever thought about that? Lions don't get sick. Giraffes don't get sick. Elephants don't get sick. Ants don't get sick. Right? Why, why is it that we are humans are getting sick? Why, why, why do we uh, uh, cough and sneeze and, and dang on people get infections and, and sinus trouble? and stomach problems that means something is wrong something is not right maybe it's because we're doing something we're not supposed to be doing maybe it's because we're not eating right eating all these processed foods how, how how do how is it that one loves watermelon candy but won't touch a watermelon why is it that some people say they like ketchup but they hate the texture of tomatoes it's like we replace what the Most High have given us, which is clean and pure, and then transform it. Like grapes are just fine the way they are. But when we eat dried grapes, which are raisins, it tastes good, right? But our body's like, hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, this is supposed to be a grape. Tastes like a grape, but there's no water. There's no nut. All the nutrients been sucked out. So the body's like, okay. So um, what we gonna do now? We gonna transfer this grape back into what the Most High created it to be. So we're gonna pull some water from the bones. We're gonna pull some nutrients from the cells, and we're gonna make this a grape again, and then di digest it. Thanksgiving is coming up, and people don't know how sexually inclined it is in some ways. Like people literally stuff a turkey. You're taking stuffing, dressing, and you're putting it up the turkey's ass. Part of my French. But ass is in the Bible as a donkey. You're taking stuffing and you're putting it up the turkey's bottom. So basically, when the turkey is cooked and done, you take the stuffing out of the turkey's anus and then you eat it. Have you ever just like literally thought about it? Like we've been taught that we need to eat. Do you understand? We've been taught that we need to start our mornings off with eggs, which are chicken fetus, and bacon, which is pork. So now, I mean, of course, we already know they make uh, chicken, turkey, and uh, I meant turkey, bacon, and uh uh, chicken bacon and lamb bacon and all that stuff now, but we know that the American classic meal is most likely a pork patty or pork <laughs> bacon, right? Or pork links <laughs> with uh, some eggs. So you have 
chicken fetus for breakfast. And then you take in, you add some uh, swine, you add some swine with it. And then you got a, some people like their, their, uh, their eggs fried or have a little hash browns with it. So you have, um, oh, and then you know you got to have some orange juice, right? So you take the orange juice from its form, which is concentrated. It's basically like hot orange juice that has been, uh, I mean, it's just chemically changed for the most part. And then they add all these other so-called ingredients to it. And then you, some people like milk with it, right? So, you know, the milk has been pasteurized and it's cow's milk at that. So you're drinking pus for breakfast with chicken fetus and hash browns that were fried in oil that is not good for you. Because you fried it in oil that is made out of either Coca-Cola, uh, not Coca-Cola, you might as well say Coca-Cola, uh, made out of canola oil or some type of vegetable oil. It's bad oil. And then you're topping it off with swine. So that's basically the American classic meal. It's like we've been taught so many wrong things, but forgetting that our body is our temple. People are going to church having Halloween and knowing that candy is not good for you and they're eating so much of it you know they're playing with fire literally because they're teaching the young ones all the wrong things they're teaching them the wrong ways and i'm sure there's going to be so many incidents in say that Five times fast. There's going to be so many situations where we may hear about that the candy has been laced with meth or marijuana or the kids being eaten. Some kid uh, overdosed on marijuana gummies for on Halloween. They're just doing all type of stuff. You don't know whose house, what's in the house, where they had the candy. Of course, we already know that they could poke needles and stuff in it. But what if they prayed over the candy that the kids get sick or that the kids die? What if they had the candy in, in, the, in the attic for like two weeks and they had a, 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 a flight of candles that they lit every night in a pentagram and they played with a Ouija board for two weeks straight and they put a curse on the candy or something? I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just thinking, man, like. We're not supposed to follow the traditions over here. Yeah, we may have so joined over here. But we are not supposed to follow the customs of this land. People are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. People are going to be celebrating Christmas on December 25th. No one's going to well. They can't find it in the Bible. Our high holy days are coming up. We do celebrate that. We celebrate Hanukkah. And we're going to eat good. We're going to roast the lamb over an open fire with bitter herbs. Have some uh, red wine. We'll discuss a little bit more and uh, in the near future about that. But we're family here. And just as I would tell my own family, hey, let's keep the most high first. Because he's worthy to be praised forever and always. If you need to get saved, just ask the Most High to save you. You have to know that Yeshua came to this earth and died for our sins. And that Yahweh lives in heaven. He created this world. He created your soul. He created the very breath that you breathe. And from that very breath, you're still breathing on it every time you inhale and exhale. For one breath, you're breathing that same one breath. Just think about that. He breathed the very breath in your nostrils. And from that one breath, you breathe on that same one breath every day, all day. And you've been breathing on that same one breath since you've been born. But I care about y'all. That's why I do this show. And um, just stay tuned. There's so much going on. I, 
I'm just so backed up on shows. I need to be doing a show on the hour, every hour. But it's not about quantity. It's about quality. It's about quality. And I hope you have a better understanding about a 501c3. If your church has an ATM in it, you need to leave. If you've been feeling funny, and if you prayed and asked the Most High for guidance and understanding and to find the right place, maybe this network could be for you. Stay tuned for the next show. We're still family, family. One luck. Oh my gosh. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you. I love you. This is this is amazing. My little sister is going to the eighth grade. I'm happy. I'm happy. Hey, I remember holding you when you got out the hospital. You don't remember that? I remember when mom brought you home and I saw your little nose and you don't remember that. Holding you when you was about four years old. Then you turned five. I remember when you lost your first tooth and they first carried me in. And I was like, wow. Oh my. Little sister is growing up real fast. I can't believe she's in math class and science class and learning algebra. Oh my goodness, I remember the other night I tried to help you with your homework and I couldn't work with you. It was, I ain't. I mean, I couldn't even let you know that. I mean, I didn't know that problem. That was kind of hard. I remember when you wanted your, your, your first perm. Now you got your fro growing real nice and it look real good. Hey, I got to school you though. If the boys trying to talk to you, the first thing they need to do is meet your bro. Because I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to make sure they're right. And don't ever mess with a young man if if his mind not right, little sister. And my other sister with the kids, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I know I don't say it a lot, but I'm proud of you. Raising all the kids. Raising my nieces and nephews. I, I, I thank you and I'm proud to see that the woman that you are, yeah, this your brother freestyling. <laughs> this your brother freestyling on the song right now. The whole album is called the freestyling. So you can laugh, yeah, you can laugh, you can laugh, laugh, laugh. I'm just happy. I'm I'm proud of you. I'm proud of all my sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't wait till the day you get married. I'ma be there. And I hope that your big brother catch the bouquet, the bouquet, yeah.